Why am I wearing two mics? Well, one of them is going to a 24-bit recorder and one of them is going to a 32-bit floating point recorder. What's the difference? If you've ever recorded in any place other than your studio, for example, recording a critically important interview for a documentary with only one chance to get it right, then you know the pressure of getting your gain set perfectly. Too low and you'll bring up the noise floor hiss from your mic, preamp or converters when you bring up the gain in post-production. Too high and you'll clip the audio, often to an irreparable level. The gain has to be set correctly and there's little margin for error. This is where 32-bit floating point audio can really save the day. But what is 32-bit audio? If you're recording into a standard desktop or rack mounted audio interface, you're more than likely recording at a bit depth of 24 bits. And if you listen to a CD, you're listening to 16 bit. 16 bit WAV files store uncompressed audio samples where each audio sample is stored as a binary number with 16 digits with a maximum possible value of 65,536. Combine that number with some quick maths and we get a noise floor of minus 96.3 decibels the maximum dynamic range that can therefore be represented by a 16-bit WAV file is the maximum signal, 0 dB, minus that minus 96.3 decibel noise floor, which gives us a total of 96.3 decibels of dynamic range. 24-bit audio files, which are customary for most recording situations, improve the amplitude resolution of the digital audio by adding more bits or units of data per sample to make a 24-bit word or information segment. With more bits and therefore more possible numbers to work with, there are more fine levels by which we can divide the audio signal. 24-bit data's highest numerical value is 16,777,215, which means that there are precisely that many increments of amplitude we can work with when recording at 24-bit. Our audio is able to have massively more clearly defined amplitude levels. Again, doing the same mathematical process gives us a noise floor of minus 144.5 decibels and so a dynamic range of 144.5 dB. This, considering the decibel scale is measured logarithmically, is a huge jump up from the maximum dynamic range of 16-bit audio. In most recording situations, this is absolutely fine for recording instruments, singing, interviews, dogs barking, cats purring, whatever you can think of. If you set your gain correctly, you're all good, and 16-bit is usually more than adequate for playback. Watch our video on sample rate for more information on that. Links are in the description down below. But what if we could just forget about setting the gain completely? What if we could record something with so much dynamic range that we blow through the already generous offering of 24 bits, 144.5 decibels? What if we can record a super quiet sound that doesn't even show on the meters and then be able to bring the gain up in post-production without increasing the noise floor and then in the same recording, without changing the gain on the recording device, capture something super, super loud and then bring it down in post-production with no clipping? What if I decide to whisper this sentence as quietly as I possibly can, but then post-production James brings it up to a usable level? On the 24-bit recording, there's so much noise that it's probably unusable, but on the 32-bit recording, the only noise you're gonna hear is from that mic there. Now you shouldn't really be able to hear anything. Apart from the aircon. Apart from the aircon and that other light. And if I do this recording on our poor abused 24-bit recorder, this recording's gonna be clipped as hell and completely unusable. But if we switch to 32-bit, it's all fine. Look, I'm dragging down the level of the 32-bit recording and all the details coming back. Compared to fixed point files, which is the technical term for 16 or 24-bit audio files, 32-bit float files store numbers in a floating point format. This doesn't mean your interface will bob along the surface if you throw it in a river, but more that the numbers are stored differently to those in our regular 16 or 24-bit files. Rather than storing each value as a number, the data is stored in an equivalent to scientific notation which makes it easier and faster for the computer to do the number crunching. To see just how much of a performance gain we can get from a 32-bit audio file, here is the biggest number we can crunch and here is the smallest. 
If we convert those values to something a sound engineer can understand, the noise floor is an absolutely minuscule minus 758 decibels and the maximum signal ceiling is positive 770 decibels. That is a dynamic range of 1528 decibels. Let's put this in some kind of scale for a moment. Flopcats purr comes in at around 25 decibels when idling, but can peak at around 45 when it's chicken time. It's about the chicken. This is. <laughs> he didn't even <laughs> sit up his <laughs> Yeah. Normal conversation comes in at around 60 decibels. A vacuum cleaner measures 75 decibels on average, a lawnmower at about 85, and a loud motorbike at about 100 decibels. Anything above about 85 decibels would be harmful after extended exposure. A leaf blower comes in at around 110, 125 at a rock concert, and a jet taking off is about 130 decibels with a gunshot at about 140. Anything at around this level is painful to listen to, even for a tiny amount of time. Just to add something super loud to our scale, the space shuttle taking off hit around 160 decibels and a nuclear bomb hits the scale at around 210, enough to kill you just from the sound wave alone. So unless your drummer is really going for it with bionic arms, these numbers are louder than pretty much anything we are ever going to accomplish in a studio, fortunately. That brings us on to how we use 32-bit files. If I drop in the recording of this very YouTube video into DaVinci Resolve, I can chop out the sections in which I need to raise or lower the volume of the clip, and it's perfectly preserved. Even if the metering is going into the red and the audio file looks ruined, that's because this timeline is measured at 24 bits, but I can just recover it. So I've adjusted and got back everything into the green, and as you can see, the audio file is still perfectly preserved. If you need to do an audio recording in which there's going to be more dynamic range than you can comfortably set a gain level and trust it not to clip or fall too low towards the noise floor, then 32-bit is the answer for you. 32-bit is also perfect for those people who want to be able to turn the kit on, immediately hit the big red record button, or if you need to capture something that's happening right now and haven't got a chance to properly set the gain. It just works. But one thing to take into consideration is the larger file size. Because we're recording more data, it's going to take more space on any storage media we use. We can easily work out the amount of data we're going to use by multiplying the bit depth by the sample rate. Assuming a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, a 16-bit recording will use 768 kilobits per second, a 24-bit will use 1.2 megabits per second, and a 32-bit recording will use 1.5 megabits per second. Overall, it's not a huge change considering the huge benefits that recording to 32-bit will bring us. Most people have sizable hard drives in their systems nowadays, and the increase to 1.5 megabits per second is likely not worth worrying about. Another thing to take note of is that if for some reason you're recording immensely loud sounds, there's a high possibility that your microphone itself will distort and clip well before a 32-bit interface ever will. So be aware of that when positioning microphones next to a SpaceX rocket launch. One other thing to look into before you start using 32-bit audio is whether your DAW can import it, and there are surprisingly few that can. For some crazy reason, Logic Pro will not import 32-bit audio files, converting them instead to 24-bit, despite having a 32-bit internal architecture. Examples of DAWs that can import and work with 32-bit audio files include Adobe Audition 2020, Premiere Pro 2020, Avid Media Composer, and DaVinci Resolve. However, be aware that at present, some of these will only import 32-bit float files running on Windows, not Mac. So check the specs before you rush out and buy a 32-bit recorder. We will be reviewing this bad boy, the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6.2 in a future video, which not only includes 32-bit floating point recording, but also features some of the best mic preamps and conversion we've ever heard in a device of its class in a future video. But for now, thanks for watching. Please find that big red subscribe button below your video and hit it like it's the emergency stop button on a Justin Bieber record. Ding the ding dong and you'll see us in the next one.